wants to hear. Okay, we're recording. Um, so Lauren, thank you so much for joining us and representing the We Are Riley team. We're very excited to have you here. here. Um, and particularly for kind of being part of some of the uh, hormone hacking stuff that we've done already as a gang. We've loved it and feedback on your products have been awesome. So really looking forward to this conversation with you. Um, I wanted to just start with a bit of an intro obviously of you specifically, but just more generally the business and kind of how you guys came to found this subscription model so why don't we start there why don't you tell us a bit about you um and also obviously the other two who can't be here this eve of course um so i'm lauren i'm from cork in ireland originally but i actually started off in technology in microsoft then i moved to london where i'm here at the moment in battersea but um i've been here for the last six years so working for a startup um which i love but it was um actually last december i was with Anya and fiona my two co-founders and we were in dublin and it was I'm not going to say it was a boozy night, but we had a bit of wine and we were in Anya's house. And then, of course, like one of us got our periods and there wasn't a tampon to be seen. And I think then we ended up having to run to the shops and long story short, it kind of ruined the buzz of the whole evening. Um, and then, of course, we started having a chat like, you know, through it all. And we were like, this happens every month. How are we not prepared? You know, this shouldn't be something that we have to worry about as women. And then it kind of just led us down, to be honest, a rabbit hole. All of a sudden we were Googling kind of, you know, is there subscriptions out there? And then we started to understand how much plastic was in products. And we were kind of taken aback, to be honest, because we had no idea. You know, you just use the products that your mom buys for you when you're a teenager, and then you just keep buying them. You don't think about it. It just goes into your shopping basket. Um, and then when we started to understand kind of, I suppose, how much plastic and everything else that was in it, we just got a bit obsessed. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of how Riley was founded, to be honest. Um, but we kind of, it was Christmas time. So this was November. And then over Christmas, we kind of we really liked the idea and we loved the concept of being able to create this. But obviously we all have commitments and jobs and mm. rent and stuff to pay. Um, so we took Christmas period to kind of think about it. And like, are we actually willing to start a business? Is that for us? Um, anyway, we all came back in January and we were kind of like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? The three of us. And we were all buzzing and there was no looking back then. So we actually only started really in January um, and we launched in April. So it was a really quick process. Um, so we were very fortunate for that, but it was because there was three of us. Um, like Oni and Fiona obviously aren't here today, um, but they're geniuses, you know, the two of them. So three heads are better than one. We just got to market really quickly. That's awesome. I mean, it's really impressive what you guys have achieved so quickly. And the other two, what what kind of background did they have before yeah, so Fiona founding the business? Is, you know, she's always been entrepreneurial. So Fiona um, Parfrey, one of the co-founders, so she has a sustainable backpack business. So she launched, she went traveling um, after college. I'm like telling her story for her, but she went traveling after college and she realized when she was traveling that like there was no backpacks for female bodies. They always strapped you right at your boobs. <laughs> and oh my God, that's such a good point. Yeah. So she was in like hostels all over Southeast Asia and places. And then she started talking to more women and everyone had the same issues. So when she came back then to Ireland originally, she started a business to create a female backpack that kind of fitted the female form. And it's amazing, Sundress. Um, but she then, I suppose, like, got, like bad timing, like launching a uh, before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so luckily she diversified really quickly and she started doing picnics and kind of swimwear and all sorts of different stuff, like swim robes and stuff in Ireland. So it worked out really well for her. Um, but I think then when Riley came to be, she's now kind of parking that because I think this is where all of our passion lies. Um, and then Anya is a totally separate background altogether. She worked in PR and she worked in Salesforce most recently. So she's actually just quit her job. She, her last day was last Friday. So I think we're all kind of on the last, like, you know, just the risk you have to take. It's like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, so she's officially uh, out of Salesforce and now she's full time with Riley as well. And you have resigned or you're in the process of resigning? In the process, so I'm actually quite lucky. My company's quite small. So when I told them I was handing in my notice, they asked me if I'd stay on kind of a couple of hours a week consultancy because I have a team. So I'm kind of on, I do a couple of hours a week just managing the team. Yeah. Um, 
which is good but at the moment I'm kind of in the process of moving back to Ireland so once I kind of don't have any more commitments or you know rent and everything else to pay I'm hoping to kind of take it back because I don't think any of us expected people think that you can start a business and it's like a side project there's no such thing it's so much time <laughs> and effort like as in we're back to back 24 hours um so there's no such thing as a side hustle I don't think <laughs> we're all the side yeah I think I think a lot of people have like been a bit more open about that like recently in terms of you know there was even a couple of years ago there was like so much hype around having a side hustle and it seemed like the perfect like hyphen career and all that kind of stuff and then it all came crashing down because so many people were like actually just completely burnt out like myself included I was like I can't do two businesses like it's just too much you know you can't you can't be like a good corporate employee working I mean you know you obviously work at Microsoft or wherever or Salesforce or wherever these places are and also like have the energy to do a good job on actually growing something and building something so yeah I really I really relate to that I think it's awesome that you guys are a team though and that was something I wanted to ask was do you obviously you know you're three women who clearly all have periods or you know have had periods is that was that kind of a conscious decision to work as a group of women do you can you imagine kind of getting to a point where you might have you know met like being totally frank like male investment for example down the line you know is that something that you guys have thought about yeah, of course. I think it kind of happened organically that the three of us fell into this because we're passionate about female health because we're women. But obviously, when it comes to kind of the future and needing investment or things like that, you're always talking to men. So we've had a couple of like investor pitches. And it's kind of funny because it's all these kind of, you know, middle aged men that you're talking to. Right? <laughs> and they're kind of just get a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> they're kind of like you could say anything to them because they don't know how to dispute you. Um, yeah that's true that's a really good point actually yeah the getting getting the funding you can just tell them whatever you want really they won't have yeah, but too. there definitely is kind of um an uncertainty because they don't I suppose understand the issues that we're talking about so it's kind of chicken and egg you know it's it's good in some ways because they don't understand the business but then in other ways it's kind of harder so it depends but equally there's been so many female investors as well that we've met and we've been speaking to which is just oh amazing. that's awesome yeah, like that's been, brilliant. I must say though, since and this is my first time going out on my own and doing a business. I know Fiona's done it before, so it's amazing to have her on board because she has so much expertise. But it's my first time, so it's quite daunting. But it's really nice because you meet women and they're just willing to help. Like people reach out to you all the time, just being like, I heard about your business. Do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want me to put you in contact with? There's such a network. Yeah. I think that's so true I, I definitely have felt that yeah like even I mean even me getting connected to Fiona is like another classic example of that right it's like kind of parallels of people just like making connections in a way that I feel like there's not necessarily and I obviously can't speak on behalf of the entire male population but um that kind of that support network is a bit more competitive I think there's a little bit more um there's a bit more of a sense that like there's only so many bites of the cherry that you can go for and so like you need to kind of keep protected in your own space you know and like not don't don't help people out too much like be be kind of protective of your business a bit more I think I, just know, I think the female network and the whole business space it's just really supportive and I'm thank god I have Fiona and Anya because I don't think I could do it by myself as a solo entrepreneur like the team really does make a big difference that's awesome so let's talk a bit about in terms of the actual products themselves and you mentioned the point about you know the, the kind of environmental impact of periods and like I was absolutely aghast reading some of the blogs on your website about some of these stats so let's talk a bit about that because lots of people who are particularly going to listen to this back on catch up won't have heard those stats so let's chat a bit about kind of when you guys were developing the product what David Attenborough-esque discoveries did you make yeah, this is it. This is why we actually decided to launch it. We were so taken aback. I did not realize, though, in terms of like shocking statistics, that an average woman uses 11,000 non recyclable tampons in her life. Um, like it, an average pad has 90% plastic content. Um, when you think about that, it takes 500 to 1,000 years to break down. So when we were like, every wow. single tampon pad I've used since I was like, what, 13 is still. Like in the yeah this. oh my god and, yeah and, and when you think there's 3.8 billion women right now menstruating in the world and this happens every month you know people are making switches to like keep cups and kind of trendy yeah. things and like, it's amazing those small differences but i suppose tampons was just never crossed my mind 
yeah I never thought about it before um so that was kind of where it all kind of began yeah and in terms of particularly I guess not only the, the actual tampon products and the pad products you're, you've created but also like all your packaging and everything I think the other thing I was thinking about was the fact that even like with the string of your tampons you've thought really carefully about kind of how to make sure that there's not like glue and like bleach and all that kind of crap which I think so many well again that was a bit of a rea realization for me so most mainstream brands in fact would you go as far as saying all mainstream brands are using those kind of synthetic chemicals and things like that um, from your like right, of your knowledge like in retail shops yeah most of them would be um and I think the difference was we were just really conscious because I think as well there's a big thing at the moment that companies are trying to be sustainable but they're not necessarily you know that whole greenwashing kind of piece we were just really selective and careful about who we wanted to work with to create our products so we actually went with a, a manufacturer in Europe and we were just really careful. They have all the certifications, you know, and making sure that like from everything from the supply chain, from like the workers to the actual, you know, ingredients themselves and everything else was what it says it was. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so we did that. And then, yes, yeah, so everything is just made from organic cotton and so everything's compostable. The only thing that's not compostable is just the applicator tampons. It's made from sugar cane, so it's recyclable. Um, but when we did market That's research, amazing. So yeah. the idea that you would, to be to completely graphic, you kind of would rinse them and then you'd put them in your rinse recycling. Them, put into the recycling bin, and then everything else will just break down in twelve months. So the comparison between you know a thousand years for a normal That's, product, yeah, for That's awesome. months for the environment, it's just yeah. Um, so you. no, it was amazing. Yeah, but I think there was also a stigma, kind of. So when we first did this, we did lots of market research and we spoke to so many women um, at the beginning just to understand kind of if they would want a product like this. Yeah. And people want to make sustainable choices if it suits their lifestyle was kind of what we understood. But equally, there was a lot of fear about the like menstrual cups and the period pants. And, you know, some people just aren't ready quite for that yet. They want their, you know, Tampax compact that they've been using for the last 15 years. Yeah. And I think the other thing as well, Lauren, is, is, you know, people who have a very heavy flow, and I speak as someone who does have a very heavy flow, yeah. it's not really that appealing to be messing about with that kind of stuff. You know, even though I'm sure there's all sorts of, you know, reassurances around efficacy, like I just, I just feel... You know, it just personally something. I just, yeah, I just, I just feel like, would I put it in right? Like, is it going to work? Are there going to be slip ups? Like, and also, like my biggest fear, like I bought a moon cup before and I never used it out of pure fear because I was like, also, if you're out on a night out and you're in a cubicle, yeah, what do you need to do? Like, go out to the public sink and like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just uh, practicality wise, it just didn't really make sense. Um, so people were just comfortable using the products they were used to. So we just kind of, that was the main thing we gained from it. Mm. Um, so then we just decided to recreate it in a sustainable way. In a sustainable way, yeah. So our products is in, it looks and like is just like a Tampax compact that women are used to, but made from just all kind of natural ingredients and everything's recyclable or compostable. So it's just a, it's kind of a replicate, but but much better and do you, like did, in your research did you find that most women were completely unaware of the sort of chemicals because even for example I put up a couple of um Instagram stories and those people replied to me being like what do you mean bleach like I don't understand and I was like yeah it's actually it's probably like one of those sort of I don't know hidden in plain sight situations like it's you're putting bleach in your vagina every month like yeah. what literally. Like if someone was literally oh yeah yeah see this flash like, just, put it. Gloves, just, put, just, just do a few spritz of that flash up, upstairs and just see how you crack on it's mad yeah oh, it was yeah. just a shocker to be honest I'm surprised and also a lot of the things we found we spoke to a lot of gynecologists and a lot of people come in with issues because of um they get like thrush very often and stuff and it's yeah. to do with ads as well a lot of them are like scented and they put a lot of stuff into it but it's like a sh you know it affects the ph of your vagina so they just it just affects i suppose your entire kind of ecosystem down there yeah yeah anyway, absolutely yeah so when it comes to your sort of vision obviously we've talked a bit about sustainability and that's clearly a huge priority for you guys and like it's awesome to just get a bit more of a picture of like how bleak the, the current situation is I think 
Um, but the other thing that I'm so impressed by, that I'm also so passionate about is period poverty and, and the fact that you guys are making, you know, really kind of conscious business decision to give, to give back and kind of support that cause. Um, and I think one of the things that most, if I talk to friends, family, clients, et cetera, most people's perception is that period poverty is happening in, you know, Kenya, developing countries. Um, and it's, it's almost a kind of, a cultural issue rather than actually an economic issue that you know in in these cultures that people are not discussing menstrual health etc and then actually when you dig into it this is a huge issue in the UK right under our noses and I feel like that's something that you know we we could really learn from you guys on because I'm sure you've done a lot of work on making the decision to sort of to prioritize that in terms of yeah, you know it's pretty harrowing when you look yeah at it, it is I think harrowing is the right word yeah, because, you know, it's because you just, um, like, it sounds very privileged to say, but it was like, I never grew up thinking that I would never have access to sanitary products, you know, it yeah. was just, like, felt normal to me. And obviously, so we're like, you think of it as a third world problem, like you say. Um, and then when you actually look into it, it was like 50% of like teenagers between, well, not even teenagers, women between 18, and I think it's 22 um don't have don't have money to buy sanitary products so it's a choice you know between almost like food or products every month and that's happening in the uk and ireland like in first world countries mm. um which is just terrifying and the fact that governments and stuff aren't like scotland was amazing being the first country yeah. for free like so cool but also um, so late like great but this i mean this like this should have happened 30 40 50 years ago yeah and then new zealand like jacinda hearn is amazing in general but yeah then she brought it in and i know in ireland as well there's a bill happening at the moment and claire hunt runs homeless period ireland which is like a big organization but i know she's talking to the government as well trying to kind of get that initiative happening um and she was the one who was kind of instrumental as well in the little deal so little yes products. yeah um, but it's just, it should, like, everyone should have access to these products. It shouldn't be, you know, it's a human right almost. It shouldn't be something that, like, women should be struggling with or having to have access to. And I think the statistics around missing school is particularly concerning, particularly, you know, especially, I guess, post-COVID when, you know, so many young people have already fallen so far behind. Yeah. It feels like just another quite simple fix that the government could, you know, could really prioritize to make sure that next year and beyond, as you say, menstrual products are not a reason to 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 kind of miss out or, or, or whatever. So with Riley, um, there's actually it's a Fiona, obviously my co-founder. She went traveling and she ended up doing kind of a stint doing um charity work over in Kenya. And there's an Irish charity based over there called Development Pamoja. Pamoja, I always pronounce it wrong, but it's based in a uh, rural Kenya. But she spent like a few weeks with them and understood kind of how the charity works. So you know, the way sometimes you're always conscious as well about just giving money to a charity. I personally like to see where the money is going. Yeah. So we decided to work with them initially because we know them. And um, so we reached out to them when we launched the business and we asked them if it was a problem. And they were saying that girls were missing school every month. You know, they were missing five, six days of school a month because you're not allowed to leave your home. It's like it's a real bad taboo as well over there right right um, so between like kind of being a female if you're on your period you shouldn't leave the house is kind of one side of it and then the other side of it is obviously they don't have the products even if they were allowed to leave the house so they just miss school so we reached out to them and we we're like you know what can we do to help so now for every euro for every product sold goes over there so and the impact you can make you know with even the smallest amount of money it's kind of just insane the difference you can make a big video of us like a whatsapp video so mary one of the she's from that well her real name is not mary but mary's her kind of you know her like irish name if you like but um she's going out with the founder of the charity and um, so we work with them now and we supply 10 schools so it's That's like amazing and two hospitals so we supply all of their sanitary products but when the actual delivery arrived they sent us a whatsapp video and all the kids were like singing all these songs and they were all like shouting and like holding their pads in the air and it just was like heartwarming yeah it was kind of like so sad because I was like that was just never something I grew up with you know I just yeah like, yeah like how excited you'd be to have a pad for the first time and these girls were like you know 15 16 like 
yeah. exactly and you think about what they would have had to have used before that you know in terms of like hygiene and stuff and I think that brings us very neatly on to what has been the most popular question for me to discuss with you which is toxic shock syndrome oh, yes. which as you know um <laughs> it's like is one of those things which I feel like when you're a teenager everyone's like don't leave your tampon in for more than three hours or you will die and you will literally never walk again your vagina will be completely mutilated and then I was reading about it before this conversation I think the thing that blew my mind is that anybody can get toxic shock syndrome men and children included like what I was like that is not at all what we were taught we were taught that it was basically if you put a tampon and you leave it in for more than the recommended dose yeah you're dead <laughs> Good luck. yeah exactly <laughs> so tell, um, tell us a bit about that um yeah so again it was like um so it's it's a bacterial infection so it can happen even if you get a cut on your arm you know if bacteria gets into your bloodstream that's what causes toxic shock syndrome so it's not caused by tampons it's just linked to it because it's kind of a common effect that if you do leave it in too long it gathers bacteria and hence it gets into your bloodstream but it's nothing like it's not caused by tampons if you get me um but it's such a shocking like I suppose everyone just assumes exactly that it's like if you sleep with your tampon in you're going to die yeah <laughs> exactly what I found really interesting when I was looking into it um was that on the one hand there was all these statistics saying that I think it was something like one in seven girls in the UK doesn't know what's happening when she gets her period. So she, she starts her bleed and she's like, what is this? Yeah. But then it feels like, so we've kind of on the one hand got this complete, huge, completely like massive knowledge gap. And then on the other hand, everybody, and I think like I speak for the entire female population of the UK has been terrified about toxic shock, shock syndrome. So it's almost like all of the energy has been put into something that's a complete like minute fairly unlikely oh, really rare. <laughs> yeah it's it so is, rare it's like, really rare you know so it's like it's obviously on the back of those like tampon boxes and everything else that's kind of a prerequisite and like I knew about it but like I live with a flatmate here in London and when I like launched Riley and stuff I was like writing the blog piece for TSS and I just like, mentioned it to her I was like you know she's like what are you doing I was like oh just writing about TSS casually on the couch <laughs> she's like what and I was like toxic shock syndrome and she's like what's that I was like she'd never even heard of it and like bear in mind like if she wouldn't mind me saying I'm sure she can hear me but you know she's a 30 year old like female and she's never even heard of TSS and she's been using tampons for 10 years <laughs> like, yeah. yeah wow but that I, I mean I, actually like good because she's probably she wouldn't have wasted the energy all the energy that we've all wasted lying awake at night being like oh it's been another 30 minutes oh my god <laughs> I know um, exactly. There's just so much things like this with female health that you just kind of I don't know whether you're just kind of unaware of it or what happens, but even like I was talking to, um yesterday to you about polycystic ovary syndrome and I was just learning up on that and it was just like it's re way more common than you think. You know, it's twenty yeah. percent of women have it. You just don't necessarily get diagnosed with it unless you're potentially trying to get pregnant and you can't or something. But yeah, it's just a really common thing amongst female health and yeah people just don't know about these kinds of issues or you know they get scared by it too like you naturally think I have polycystic ovary syndrome I can't have kids you know I'm barren oh. that's not the case at all I also think particularly um PCOS seems to have been really closely associated with weight to the detriment I think of that connection like there's absolutely lifestyle factors and changes that you know doctors recommend if you do get diagnosed to try and help but I have plenty of clients who've been diagnosed with PCOS who are not in any stretch of the Im imagination anywhere near overweight yeah. and I think they they took a lot longer to get diagnosed because essentially the only real um symptom as you say apart from coming to conceive and not being able to in your kind of you no know, teens to 20s is your weight and that that's just not helpful because it means that women who are overweight will be assumed to have PCOS which they don't and women who are underweight or you know normal weight on the you know BMI scale whatever we're going to call it will not push forward for diagnosis because there's almost these sort of it's a bit like the toxic shock, shock syndrome thing of just like not particularly useful information really being distributed about it 
that's it exactly and I think yeah as I had a friend recently who was like diagnosed with it because she actually had like a pain you know in her cramps so they ended up taking her in and they kind of did the scan or the whatever and then yeah. she, she was diagnosed with that but I remember she rang me afterwards like she came to my house she was bawling crying just being like you know oh my god I can't have and I was like that's not the case like you can have children I was like my sister has polycystic ovary syndrome and she's got two beautiful girls it took her longer to get pregnant yeah like you know she had to get hormone like injections and stuff is and it did take her longer but it's not the case and I think that's just the kind of mindset people just assume that you know my ovaries aren't working and this is it and I'm absolutely you know but it's just yeah it's it's more common than people think um so it's just about managing it Definitely. And also, I guess, having brands like yours talking about this stuff alongside, you know, selling your products, right? Like you you guys, it feels to me like even just from the content you put up so far, you're really passionate about education on kind of more broader female health issues, which I think is just really useful because let's be honest, I'm not seeing this stuff on the syllabus right now. So, you know, it's like if, if it's not going to come from brands like you, like who, you know, who who's going to be responsible for doing this, really? Well, I think the three of us, so Anya, Fiona and myself, you know, we started off with this because it made sense because this is the age group we're in. Like we're all menstruating females. But like, I think we've all become a little bit obsessed with the menopause as well. Oh, my God. That's yeah. We should do another talk on that completely. Yeah, yeah. Bring me back because I'm obsessed with it. Like all I do now is research the menopause. And I spent like over like COVID, I was over uh, with my mom and her friends and stuff a lot I went home for three months and they all obviously have been through it and it was just like even just having a conversation with females no one talks about it no one shares the intel or the tips and tricks of how to deal with it it just all of a sudden I think it just creeps up on you and no one gives you the heads up and then there's like perimenopause which hits you at like anywhere from 37 like through your 40s so you're still getting your periods but your actually body is going through menopause a hundred percent. I actually had a really awkward situation. Crazy, but you, you're not crazy. It's just your hormones. No. <laughs> yeah. But I, I had a, I had a call about a month ago with, um, with a lady inquiring about my services and she told me her age and I said, are you perimenopausal? And she took it very badly. She, she, it was kind of as if I was saying, I don't know, you know, have you got like gray hair and loads of wrinkles? And I was like, no, 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 I'm not that that's that's but she didn't really understand or know what perimenopause even what I think she thought I was saying, are you post menopause? <laughs> I think she maybe thought I was saying like are you post? I don't know. It just it, it was so interesting to me afterwards. I was like, wow, this is actually something that I've got. I'm assuming knowledge because of the research and obsessions that I have with periods and menstrual health. But actually, as you say, a woman in her mid to late 30s very easily could be perimenopausal slash women in their early 30s in some cases no exactly and it's just something that I think there's like a again like as in periods are one stigma but I think as well menopause is almost worse because I think there's a stigma against like aging women in general like women don't want to admit they're getting older so people kind of try to hide it and then hence they don't talk about it and then no one learns or understands how to deal with it yeah like women five years to figure out their own whether they want to do like hormone treatment or whether they do natural stuff or sage or magnesium and all these different things that work for them but you know if it was me and like kind of part of like myself Bonnie and Fiona you know we're obviously all kind of early 30s at the moment but we're like we want to like debunk and understand the menopause before we're in the menopause you know yeah yeah you. you know we want to actually give people the heads up of what's coming and it's normal and your hormones change and your personality changes and it just shouldn't be a surprise in my view I completely agree completely agree well let's pencil that for the next conversation we can have a whole, yeah. whole, whole oh, series of <laughs> but um but let's l- tell, tell us what did you chat to your mum and her pals if we're kind of on the subject of myth busting and, and we've obviously talked about PCOS we've talked about the fact that you know people are putting bleach in their vaginas against their knowledge that you're not going to end up getting toxic shot syndrome from having a period you know and putting a tampon in for another half an hour than recommended and that men can get it too tell us tell us a sort of myth busting had some headlines that you kind of got from your mum and her pals in terms of things that maybe because I mean I think if I think about what do I what was I taught about menopause I feel like I literally just basically got told that your vagina becomes like cobwebs and that's basically it that's kind of like that that's the end of the process 
but it was just um like I remember so we were basically we were sitting around and it was her and her friends and I used to start asking questions because at the time we were founding Riley so I was just so curious everything to do with female health any knowledge I could get I was asking everybody and they were all so like, cautious and nervous and like, awkward and I was like but like why are you know I just didn't understand it but then all of a sudden of course after a glass of wine or two they were all just letting like all the things flow and all of a sudden mom was like oh nothing worked for me and then all of a sudden I tried sage and apparently that's a really big randomly like a nutrient you know that helps and then one of the other ladies was like oh that worked for me too but it took me about three years to like figure that out and it was like why couldn't you have just connected that? yeah <laughs> you might have just been like heads up this works really well you know but they just no one spoke about it um, and I think that's the kind of difference we kind of want to create kind of a platform where anyone who has tips or tricks of what works for you as a female in terms of your health you should tell the next woman you know because there's no point then spending so much time trying to figure it out for themselves let's just speed up the process and share knowledge 100% so sage is what we were they eating sage what's the what's the sort of hack like supplements, yeah. Supplements. Supplements. And magnesium. yeah and then there's obviously the hormone treatment as well but some women yes. are all for it and other women don't want to take it um but I know you know for my mom she took it and it said like it was amazing because before that she was getting hot flashes she said she'd like get out of the shower she'd get dressed in like all glam and she'd walk down to like the street and she'd be absolutely drenched. drenched like she'd have to lie to her friends and be like oh I ran here and she'd be wearing a shirt you know she didn't go for oh, a run she had to, like, make up lies yeah she was, like, so embarrassing um but it shouldn't be embarrassing this is the thing you know it's like I think there's just it's a real like secret um but we're all going to go through it so I think it's just the sooner we realize that and kind of understand it. it yeah um, on the magnesium point, actually, that's something that has become really popular also for period kind of issues as well. Just like, I guess, just a little side note to point out to people who might be um, struggling, like magnesium supplementation is really recommended if you're struggling with PMDD type symptoms. So, you know, really um, difficult mood swings, um, you know, energy fluctuations like all of that kind of stuff magnesium is is also really recommended um for that too so that's just something on that subject that is worth mentioning on this topic that one recently from holland and Barrett, but it was like you know a spray for your chest it was like oh yeah i've heard that the spray is is really good because there's certain um on the magnesium supplementation and actually probably should follow up with more information about this but there's certain if you're on certain medication for example antidepressants you cannot take it um but there's yeah there's a there's a there's a little bit of kind of small print so for anyone listening to this later just check with your doctor as always i'm not a doctor and neither are you just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> caveating that um fabulous well listen it's been so good to chat to you um i've loved hearing all about the journey for business so far let's close by you just telling us a little bit about kind of what's next for you guys in terms of both your partnership with um with this incredible charity and kind of where where yeah where you see things going over the next sort of six months or so yeah so i suppose over the next six months what we plan to do is i suppose just get a bit more brand awareness and kind of educate people on just why they should be switching like not necessarily to our products but just in general um everyone should be making the switch because the damage to the environment month on month is just crazy and i think it's just the education piece because people don't realize they're doing it we just need to educate so the more we do that you know the better and then obviously we're working at the moment in kenya but we're planning on also partnering with a charity in ireland and hopefully the uk as well shortly so as well as kind of doing stuff over in africa we're hoping to also kind of combat i suppose period property closer to home back at home yeah well let keep me definitely keep me posted on that because that's definitely something that i'm super like super passionate about and interested in um i said that to you when we spoke so that's so exciting um if anybody has any questions both listening to this sort of back on the recording or on who's who are tuning in pop them um in the comments or drop us an email but i'm sure we'll be chatting again and actually we should definitely do a special one on perimenopause because i think that's really awesome. bit of a <laughs> yeah exactly all about the menopause maybe get your mum to do a guest cameo that would be awesome sure she would hate to be on camera <laughs> 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 
Thank you so much for giving us um, so nice this evening. and thank you girlies for joining us on this live. Um, lots of love to everyone and we will summit very soon. Thank you so much, Doran. Take care.